but as you can see that trace is pretty distorted but it does respond now to the time base and my position on Y2 works but I still have nothing in channel 1. Welcome back to Solid State Cinema. What do we have on the bench today? Two Heathkit scopes. Why two? Because one is broken, which is this one, and one works, which is that one. And they both happen to be the same type of Heathkit scopes. So I'm going to use this scope to fix this scope. They're both the model 4510. They're a dual trace 15 megahertz scope. So in this first video, we're going to fix the horizontal section, and then in part two, we'll fix the vertical. So here we go. So here's the situation. If you take a look at this scope, which is the model IO4510, you've got a nice trace across the screen, right? So I have horizontal sweep, right? There it is, sweeping across. However, if you look at this one, which is also a model 4510, I have no horizontal sweep, but I found if I change the time on horizontal sweep, it affects this vertical movement, right? And if I move Y2 position, you can see it moving. However, Y1 does nothing. So what I suspect is we have a problem on the horizontal sweep board. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this scope and we're going to use that to troubleshoot this scope. And luckily, I have Heathkit schematics and service manuals. So since Heathkit is so well documented, this shouldn't be too bad of a repair effort. So let's take a look at the horizontal board. So this is the horizontal time base board, okay? So you select the sweep rates and this board sends its output to this board back here behind the CRT. So this has our sweep driving transistors and some other amplification that feeds the CRT. The first thing I noticed was is I can feel heat coming off of this set of heat sinks here. But over here, these guys are cold as a cucumber. So check in the schematic. This is the vertical output side, and that's horizontal output side. So obviously we're either missing voltage or missing drive to these transistors. So let's see if we can figure out which one of the two is missing. So as a quick check, I have my meter set up, and we're going to look at the collector voltage on one of these output devices got 202 volts. Let's take a look at the schematic and see what that should be. So here's the schematic and you can see the collectors of the horizontal sweep transistors right there. These are the main outputs that go to the CRT. It says there should be 130 to 150 volts with this fancy little ramp here, right? And that would be when the transistors are operating under load. Well, they're obviously not doing that because they're at 200 volts. So I think we're on to something. Next thing, let's get a scope in here. We'll take a look and see what we have here for the signal. And if it's not there, we'll work our way back. So I've got my scope set up. Actually, the working scope is set up. We're going to go to the collector of this output device and what do we got? Nothing. Alright, so obviously we have no output from the collectors of these transistors and that's why they're cool as a cucumber. So now what I'm going to do is check the output off of that horizontal time base board and see if possibly there's no signal coming from that to this board and then I know which board to troubleshoot. Alright, well what's really nice about Heathkit is not only is their documentation great, but their circuit boards are also identified for every control that's on it, right? So here is sweep length, you see that? Trace rotation, and here is the output IC that is feeding that driver board, 
And right here is a pin that says out. And look at there on the scope. I have a signal. Now let's see if I change my time, does it change? Yes, it does. So we have the horizontal sweep signal going over to that driver board, but for some reason it's not processing the signal. So let's go back to the driver board and see if that signal is even making it there. So I'm at the input to the transistor on the driver board, okay? Now if I adjust the time, it's doing nothing, right? So that signal should look like this signal coming from the oscillator board. See that? It's a nice signal. It's a terrible signal coming in here. So now what I'm wondering is, is this transistor defective on the input to the driver board? So according to the schematic, there should be six volts on the collector of this transistor roid that I'm on. Okay. So let's see if I can probe it through the old Scoperino probe. Let's see what we got. There we go. 1.72 volts. So we have a little bit of a bias issue on the input transistor to the driver board on the horizontal section. So let's take a closer look and see if we can spot anything out of the ordinary. So I guess I should have talked about the history of this scope before I started troubleshooting it. You see these white spots here along the edge and down here around the transformer you can see some light corrosion. Well this thing was exposed to some moisture because I believe this scope was stored standing up on its back, okay? Over here, you can see the same corrosion, right? So now that I look a little closer here, if you look right down in there, it's really hard to see, there is some rust around the base of this pot, okay? I know it's hard to spot it, but there is corrosion on the circuit board, so it obviously has some water damage. And unfortunately, the input transistor that I was just measuring is right there. It's Q511, and that pot right in front of it has all kinds of nice rust on it. So what I think is going on is either the pot got wet, corroded, and failed, or possibly it popped that transistor. So at this point, what I'm going to have to do is get the circuit board out so I can inspect it. It looks fairly simple to get it out. I think you take this screw out right there. And from the looks of it, there's a plug-in like Molex connector down there on the chassis. So I'll have to pop off the CRT plug and hopefully she'll pop out and we'll give it a good inspection. All right, I got the board out. You gotta be really careful removing that CRT connector. I had to kind of rock that thing in and out. But take a look down here by old Q511. And then there's a pot there, a little PC board mounted pot. You can see the corrosion. There's evidence of water that's been on this board. You can see that little white milky look to it. So what I'm going to do is buzz out these transistors, check that pot. Hopefully the damage was just in that area. Maybe I can remove the pot and clean it or possibly just have to replace it. But either way, I don't see anything smoked. It just uh, one time got some moisture, did its damage and you see what we get. So let's see what I can find and then we'll put the board back in and see if we get the horizontal sweep back. All right, so it looks like we do have a little bit of battle damage here. I'm on that rusty pot. So here we are, the outside two prongs, 4K. 
you go from here to here, you can see she's only about maybe 12 ohms. Here to here. Well, I thought it was open, but it's not. So maybe some cleaning there would help. Now let's check the transistor rates. So here, I'm just going with a diode check. I know you can't see what I'm doing. It's too difficult for me to get all that in the camera. So this is Q511. So there's one junction. That's the base collector. Here is the base emitter. So it looks like it's alive. Here's collector emitter. As soon as it's shorted. Nope. Here is Q512. Same deal. Okay, I'm checking base collector. It's open. Base emitter. It is also open. Now I'm going across the collector and emitter. It's also open. So Q512 is totally open. And it is on the line that's called center off of the horizontal circuit. And it works in conjunction with Q511, which drives the output transistors. So Q512 is open. We need to clean up the board, get this pot off of here, clean him up. And then I'll buzz out the rest of the transistors. But if everything else looks good, and I can find an equivalent to Q512, I should probably take off running. Problem is, is Heathkit used these crazy numbers. They're all 417 dot something. Sometimes if you're lucky, the actual transistor number will be on it. Let me see what this one says. 417293. So I'm going to have to see what I got. Because we definitely got to change that transistor. Alright, I've removed the pot and Q512 right here in my hand. The transistor is definitely open. I'm going to try just to clean the pot for now and I'm going to get this rust off the board, find a transistor, buzz out the rest of the parts in the area, and hopefully get her going. Well, it uh, turned into be quite the project. I have changed every signal transistor on the driver board. So Q511, 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17 were all open. So now I do have a trace and the focus is working. But as you can see, that trace is pretty distorted, but it does respond now to the time base. And my position on Y2 works, but I still have nothing on channel one. So we're getting closer. The scope will come to life soon. Now I see this ripple. I'm wondering if I may have a power supply issue. So that will be the next thing that I'm going to evaluate before I troubleshoot channel one position. Well, at this point, I decided maybe I should give the power supply filter board here a closer look since it appears as though that bump that we saw in the horizontal trace could be a power supply issue, right? Well, these two caps here are for the positive and negative 15 volt power supplies that feed that horizontal driver board and it also feeds vertical board, right? And we saw that bump, remember, on the scope trace and I thought, well, maybe one of these caps are bad. So I was looking at this cap in particular. Now I'm going to cut and close up on this thing and I'll show you what I see. It's very suspicious. So if you look at the positive side of this cap, it's actually kind of bulged, right? It's poking up and that's a sure sign that there could be an issue with it. So I thought I better get a capacitor checker and throw it on this thing. Because if you look at the age of these caps, they're probably bad anyway. So these two caps are 2500 microfarad at 30 volts, okay? 
they come right off of the bridge rectifier for the 15 volt power supply that's positive and negative 15 then it goes through a regulator and they have another couple caps I think they're like a thousand microfarad that filter it and from there it's distributed throughout the scope right so the one I suspect is right there now my meter only goes up 2,000 microfarads right so let's check the first one here for the heck of it and I'm sure it'll probably just overrange on my meter yep it did so you saw it hit a high value and then it overranged now let's check this one let's see what we get oh nothing okay so as suspected that cap is bad before I go any further we're gonna change these two filter caps and the thousand microfarad caps that follow the voltage regulator on the 15 volt power supply rails and let's see if that solves our horizontal ripple that we're seeing on that trace so what's really nice about Heathkit is they're brilliant designers okay so you take out four screws and there's like Molex pin connectors and you can pretty much lift that board right out for maintenance it's not like this new stuff that you see where you got to totally gut it I mean these guys really did a heck of a job which makes Heath kits a lot of fun to refurbish I located a nice set of Sprague replacement caps to replace the ones that were defective I also replaced the thousand microfarad caps that were on the other side of the voltage regulator and while I was at it, there was a little 2200 microfarad cap right here that also was obviously aged and I wanted to get it out of there. Yes, there are still some original caps in here, but I just want to see if I corrected that issue on the horizontal trace. Well, there she is, fired up. I have a nice straight line. That ripple, the big old bump, is gone. The horizontal sweep is working. Nice bright trace, great focus. So I would assume that the horizontal sweep issue is fixed. Now I have to move on to the other issues, but this project is really coming along nicely. Well, that wraps up the sweep repair of the Heathkit 45 10 oscilloscope. And you can see it was fairly involved, and I'm sure there's those of you would say, why would you bother fixing that, Terry? That scope is probably not worth 50 bucks. The reason I'm doing it is to show you how to fix these problems if you run across the same issue with your favorite Heathkit, the Soul Scope. So join me in part two when we attack the vertical. We'll see you again. Solid state cinema.